All right, guys, so in this example here, we have three forces acting on a part, force F1, F2, and F3. These forces are all given in polar, which is just a resultant force at an angle, theta. We're going to be looking to convert this into Cartesian, which, if you recall, is going to be I, comma, J, and comma, K, if you had 3D, but this is just 2D, so we'll have a I and a J, which indicates your X and Y component. Uh, now make sure you know your trig properties of SOHCAHTOA for this problem. So we have uh, so, uh, sine equals opposite over, sine theta, I'm sorry, equals opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. And then tangent theta equals uh, opposite over adjacent. So let's start with force F1. So for force F1, you'll know that it has an X component pointing to the right and an X comp and a Y component pointing uh, downwards, like so. Uh, now... We can label this as x and y. However, uh, we don't know the angle here, so the angle, which would be here, theta, we know is going to be indicated by this triangle here, which gives us the rise and the run, as well as the slope. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to, in my case, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to convert this into getting us the angle, because I don't like using the, the triangles for the slope. It always confuses me, although you can do it if you're more comfortable doing it. But I know that from opposite interior angles that this angle here that I just outlined in that triangle is going to be equal to our angle theta. And we can find that angle by using our inverse of tangent. So we'll do tan minus one of the opposite of that, which is three over the adjacent, which is four. Plug it in your calculator. You'll have 36.87 degrees. So we know theta equals 36.87 degrees. Now we can use our cosine here and we'll have 850 which is our hypotenuse 850 cosine of our angle 36.87 equals your x component and how did i do that well if you know that your uh, cosine of theta equals your adjacent over hypotenuse multiply hypotenuse times cosine of angle theta you'll get your adjacent again your hypotenuse in this case is 850 that's why i have that there your theta we know is 36.87 and then your uh, your adjacent angle would be your x so that's how we get our x. And if you plug it in your calculator, you'll have that your x equals 680, and we're dealing with newtons here, 680 newtons. And then we have our y, which is 850 sine 36.87. It's really the same idea because you have your sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Your opposite is your y. Multiply both sides by the hypotenuse. You'll have 850 sine theta equals your opposite, or 510 newtons. So therefore, we can say that force F1, so force F1 equals, and we'll open up some brackets here, we'll say 680 comma 510. Uh, however, notice that your Y is actually pointing downwards, and because it's pointing downwards, it's going to be negative. So we have a 680 and a negative 510. All right, now force F2, we know force F2 is going to have a vector pointing to the left, and then the next vector is going to point down, something like that. And I like to get the angle again from the x-axis. So what is this angle here? Well, we know that we have 90 degrees in the entire quadrant of quadrant 3, and we lose 30 degrees to this angle here. So then th therefore, this must be 60 degrees in here. So now we just use really the same properties where we have the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle equals your x, and then the uh, hypotenuse times the sine of your, of your angle equals your y. So we'll go ahead and do that. So 625 cosine of 60 and 625 sine of 60. This equals your x, this equals your y. So the x is going to be 312 0.5 newtons, and then the y is going to be 541.27 newtons. And therefore, we have our force F2 equals in Cartesian. So we have a leftward force of 312, so negative 312.5 newtons, because again, Pointing to the left, we're going to say is negative. Pointing down is negative. Um, and then right is positive and up is positive. So we'll have negative 312.5 to the left and then also negative 541.27.
And last but not least, we have F3. So let's go ahead and draw our vectors for F3. So F3 points to the right, and then it points upwards. So the angle here is, for, is 90 minus 45, which is then 45 degrees. So we have, for the X, we have 750 cosine of 45. And for the Y, we have 750 sine of 45. Now, remember that 45 degrees is right in the middle of the quadrant, so therefore we know that our x and y should be equal for both of these numbers, and therefore plug this in your calculator and you'll have 530.33 newtons and 530.33 newtons. As a result, we have force F3 equals, open up our bracket, so our x is pointing to the left, so we have negative 530.33. And our y is pointing up, so we have 530.33. And there you have it. These are your three Cartesian vectors uh, for force F1, F2, and F3.